thank you for having me. Uh, it's just great. And I feel that I'm in such august company that it worries me a little bit when you have a person like Violet Smythe. And uh, she's out there doing a whole bunch of workshops and I'm not doing very much these days, but it's okay. And when I was asked to do this, and this is a long time ago, Debbie said, well, we'd like you to do something. And I said, okay, November. And I didn't really know what I was going to do, but it has turned out to be a kind of a Christmassy thing. Uh, and I have tried to center in on some of the things that you will need in order to do your opus later on, which is going to be the poinsettia. Uh, sometimes you don't know what you're going to do. I was standing in line at London Drugs at their post office, and I had done a package to be sent to one of our members, Ann Atkinson, and if she's looking at the recording, she'll laugh, I think. And I had done her name in a certain way. And as I got up to the clerk, the clerk said, wow. And the other clerk said, oh, I just love that. And one of the customers who was behind me said, oh, how do I get on your list? And I thought, maybe they'd like to learn that. So that's going to come up. But for right now, I want you to take your half inch brush and I want you to get ready to write and I'm going to write the word brush. Can you see that? It's a little bit light, so I'll go a little bit darker. And I'm not doing it in any particular way. Uh, and I don't want you to do any um, judging, but here we go. I'm just doing a little bit of twisting and you can do it in any way that you like. Maybe put a little end on it. And that will get us started. And you're using your half inch brush and it's turned out quite well. And you love your tool because you can do something so fast, you can address an envelope with a brush in an instant. And sometimes the other things that we try to do take a little bit longer than an instant. Now, I would like to get you into some tiny things. So what I want you to do is to look at this stroke. And then I want you to put your brush there and I want you to go no farther than just across it. And suddenly you have almost a candy cane look going on there. Can we do it on this one? Yes, we can. Go no farther. Turn your page if you need to. I'm going to do it here and see if I can get it to fill right in. Yes. Some parts are a little bit more tricky. We've got, got a very small line here, so I don't have to pull that stroke much at all. But the additional stroke on top gives a little bit of interest. Here on the S, I'm going to have to fan the right side of the brush a bit to get there. My brush is a little too wet. I'm leaving puddles of water and we don't want that. Uh, if I'm using this tiny container and it's only about two inches wide, I sometimes just put my brush on the edge and the tiniest corner of it and that's enough water for me, sometimes a little too much. What you want to have is a dry brush, dryish. It can't be totally dry, but if you have a dryish brush for what we're doing right now, it will work quite well. So I'm, I'm hoping that this is going to work nicely. Yes, it worked all right. And in here, and I'll do my crossbar. And with very little trouble, I have a more interesting word than I might've had if I had just done it as brush strokes. And suddenly you might get a little image of candy canes uh, conjuring up in your mind because that's a little bit how they look. But we have to learn how to manage the brush in small places. So I'm going to ask you to learn this little stroke. You need to think of you coming toward a goal. So I've got a little dot there. I'm going to put my half inch brush as if I'm going toward it. I'm going toward it. And as soon as I get there, I'm going to put a little pressure on the left hand side and then come back. I'm making a little arrow. Always in your mind, you have to think I'm going toward something 
And then I'm just putting a little pressure on the side that's the opposite. I would like you to be able to make these arrows going anywhere. I'd like them to be larger and I'd like them to be smaller. But the thing I really want, and if I were running around the room after you, I'd be checking this. I want this curve to be here. I want a beautiful curve to be here, here, and here. If you've got something that looks jagged and it isn't a nice smooth curve, then you haven't done it correctly. Remember, you're moving toward your dot and then you're kind of stopping and turning the other side of the brush. But the whole brush remained on the page the whole time. That's going to get you into some places that we're going to find ourselves having to be into later. But if you've mastered that, you, you've got a good start. And you'll notice that on some of the exemplars, I have used these in order to make a snowflake affair. I'm going toward my goal, coming back. I can have one that faces the other one, toward my goal and coming back. I can go away and I can go away and I've got a little football shape or a little lemon shape in the middle. So we've got a lot of possibilities. Uh, if you look on your sheet, and I don't know whether you've printed them off or not, but you'll find that this little image here is made up of all of these and it looks like a, a nice little snowflake. This one, has uh, all of the ones that are going facing each other like this. So if you look closely at what you were um, sent out, you will find that there's a, a lot of ways of putting it together. The other thing that I want you to be able to do is to be well in control of the, the brush in another way. I want you to be able to start out at zero degrees, so that would be parallel with the edge of your paper. And immediately, I want you to pull your right thumb down a little bit, and you're taking the brush with you, and then you're going right back to zero again. What you've achieved here is what we in the calligraphic word would be, uh, refer to as entasis because we have a wider part at the top, we have a slight wasting in the middle, and we have a wider part at the bottom. And in the olden days, when they were talking about this, they were saying it's like looking at a column. And when you're seeing it at the top, it seems a little bit wider, it seems to get a little narrower on the way down, and then wider again at the bottom. So I want you to be able to do this, and I want you to be able to do it in many different lengths. You're going from zero degrees to a much higher angle and then back to zero. And very, very smoothly. Try not to think, oh, I got to turn now. Try to make a very smooth movement. Uh, be able to do that very tiny. Be able to put them on top of each other. There's one. There's another one and might get a little bit of an overlap there, but I like it. But it's the same stroke and it's just a lovely, lovely stroke. Is there anybody in my audience besides Joyce Gammy who is left-handed? Nobody's admitting to it. Um, I know that Joyce is able to handle all of these things. She's going to be saying, Betty is saying the so-and-so, I will reverse it for me and that will work. Uh, but if you are left-handed, uh, I actually did this class for a group in Salem, Oregon the other night, and I did have a left-hander. And I did have to resort to trying to do the strokes with my left hand. And you know, I could manage it. And I was amazed at myself. And sometimes it goes through your mind, if I were to lose the use of my right hand, would I still be able to do calligraphy? And that assured me that maybe I would be able to because, you know, you don't use that other hand. It's, it's your partner, but you just don't use it. Okay, let's move on. 
Uh, some of you who have had this workshop before, you haven't really had this one, but you've had one that might be similar, you will know that I'm referring to, uh, I call this the ballet slipper. And what I want to do is go, I'm going to travel to the right and up a little bit, but then I'm going to come down and join it. I have my, my wrist is kind of going like that as I do the stroke. I'm going up to the right and then I'm coming down, but I have very little pressure on the brush because I want this to be a very pristine stroke. And I don't want you to just sort of knock it off so that it's got a gap here. We don't want a gap there. We would like this to be closed in and beautiful. And I'd like you to be able to do those in other ways. Can you go down to the left and back up? Can you go up right ahead of you and come back down? Sometimes you have to resort to turning your paper and that's certainly all right because I can't slap your hands when you're there at your house and I'm here at mine. Uh, <laughs> you know, you just, you, you have to do what you have to do. And, and I don't mind if you're unmuted and you, if you want to ask a question at any time, I would try to address it if, if that needs to be done. So please don't let me go along without you um, being able to ask a question. Okay, uh, I'm going to go on from that one now. And here's a stroke that I think you really do need to know. I want you to have no pressure and then some pressure and I'm turning my brush a little to the right. It actually does it. And then I want you to come right off so you are Little, big, little. And that has to be the way I want it to be for the whole thing. Can you do it so that you've started off with quite a long entry and then going a little bit bigger and then out? Can you do that again? You're pressing down, then you're coming up and you're just tickling the paper and then you're pressing down again. And now you're just tickling the paper. You're pressing down again. And now you're just tickling the paper. A real difference between the width of the stroke. At the widest part, my brush is wider than it is normally. And if I really went down on it hard, I could almost double its size. Let me try that. I'm on it, I'm down hard on it. And then I'm coming up and I can't almost double it, but it's quite a bit larger. But I want you to be able to do that. And here's another thing, and I noticed it here because I was talking and thinking, and sometimes when you're talking and thinking, you interrupt your artistic thought. Do you see this little bulge here? That's where I thought, oh, I've got to turn the brush. Try not to think about turning the brush. See if you can have it just happen. Diana, would you unmute yourself? Yes. I had a little chat with Diana the other day and I said, if I could just come over there and hold your hand, I know we'd be able to do it. But <laughs> I, did, I did linguistically ask her if she could try it a different way. Were you able to benefit from what I said? Yes, and it is better. It is it's better. better? Yeah. Okay, because I think that I said to her, try not to think. And you know, when you've got a tech person in your guild, they are thinking all the time. And it's really hard to tell a person not to think. But if you just let it happen, it sometimes happens a little more beautifully than if you have thought about it the whole way through. I hope that that helps a little bit because we're moving right along now. Can you take this uh, stroke and make it a little bit like an S? You'll notice I've pulled a wee bit to the right there. We don't want too many of those, but that is something that you may have to use. Now, if 
this brush is used in the very rudimentary way, it does that, it makes a square. And, and when we were doing the word brush, we were basically doing some of those things. But I would like to have you take a little look at a card that I sent to my friend, Ross Bully. He was turning 83. Oh, I shouldn't tell you, he might not want the world to know. But this is what I sent him. And this is one of the things that uh, kind of made the people at London Drugs excited. They said, how did you do that? And it was so very simple. And this is certainly what got me going on it. So I am going to show you. I think that people find this enjoyable because it almost looks as if it's made of mosaic. And it's very easy to do that. And I have to talk a bit right now. I found some brushes that I absolutely love. And this was several years ago. And June Math, and I think you're here. And I think you have also found them. This is called an artist's brush set. And these two flat brushes in here have been just wonderful for me. Uh, I made Ross's card <laughs> with this very, very tiny brush. And I think that it's no wider than a 16th of an inch. This one is really not very wide either. And I do have a nice quarter inch brush that I use a lot, but I couldn't believe it. This set of brushes was $1.25. And I thought I'm gonna to have to tell them about them. And I went to my dollar store and I couldn't find anything, but I did find this set and I tried them and they are terrible. Don't go out and buy them. They have absolutely no power in them. These seem to have a little bit of stiffness and when you're doing the work that we're doing, that tiny bit of stiffness really helps in your turning. These just kind of go to mush in your hands. So I wouldn't recommend this at all. But this one was wonderful. And if you find a dollar store that has old stock, this is called Master Stroke. And it has this green thing in the middle and it has blue stuff on the bottom. And I know that I bought several sets because I was teaching a, a little class and I have three of these and I'm thinking, oh, I'm so lucky. So maybe if I die and my stuff is put out there, some of you might find that maybe this is left and then you can, <laughs> you know, whatever. Can, All I, right. can I just add, it's uh, Caroline here. I'm pretty sure I just bought a couple of those sets in iron oxide um, and I bought them for my seniors to paint because they were cheap and I'm sure it was that exact same set, the blue handles. <laughs> oh, I'm hoping, it because, and were they a dollar? I don't think so. No, they were, for the set, I think it was about $5 and I grabbed it because I thought that's gonna be great. I can have lots of brushes for the seniors for not very much money. And I'm sure well, it was that set or that something very, very similar. I have, um, I have very similar ones. Well, I am so glad that there's something out there because what I found here was really not very good. So people remember iron oxide is probably mm -hmm. going to be a good place for you. Anyway, to start this, I would like you to take a pencil and I want you to draw ever so lightly, but I can't because you can't see it. So I'm going to draw and I'm going to do just a plain old eye. And this is just to get you started as to how to go about doing this. Sorry about the shakiness here, but my <laughs> hands are going the wrong way and I'm going around my connection and it's not very good, but it's okay. You're, I hope nobody is unhappy. Let's, uh, I am going to show you how I would start doing this. So I've got my eye and I'm going to use my flat brush and I'm going to come into various places like this, and I don't want to have them the same place all around. I may have to turn the page a little. It's better to come away from it than to it, but you know, I, I don't mind doing this so that it takes a little less time. You'll notice how I'm mating them up a bit. I'm not worried that this stroke is a little lighter than that one. It's still the same loading of the brush. And if you have some things going out a little farther, 
then you have started to think about your totality, what it's going to happen at the end. Uh, let me change color. I'm just changing it for a moment. I'm going to go into something a little more red. And it doesn't really matter what you do here. You just have to start building it up. So there's a place and that's quite nice. And maybe I'll come in here. Maybe I'll go there, here. So you'll see that it's being worked up all at once. And you love it when the amount of paint on your brush goes down and that what was red to start with becomes pink. And so it's starting to come together. And as we work on it, uh, we're enjoying the, the fact that we get to change. We do have to have a relatively clean brush in order to do this. There's a blue. And what if you don't quite make it right? Do you see this tiny snitch of white? People like that because if you were doing a mosaic, it would be a grout line. And having them absolutely perfect is not what we're looking for. We want them to have that little bit of interest where you didn't quite make it. So I think you know what I'm doing now. And I think the card for Ross shows you how it would uh, seem to look in the end. And I need to show you his envelope. Uh, it was interesting. We went to dinner at their house and I said, oh, Ross, could I borrow that uh, card back? He said, it's on my mantle and I've been enjoying it. And I said, well, I'll give it back. But this was his envelope. So I've done a reverse of this to make the O for his uh, name. So I've tried to enclose it all within the O shape on this one. Have a good time with your lettering. Lately, I've been doing a lot of work just using a black ballpoint pen. And you know, sometimes if you're using a ballpoint pen, you can get stuff that you might not normally get out of your more formal settings with your uh, tools. I loved doing his S's and I loved having them mate with the Y as we were, as, I, as the thing was coming. I try to keep the address a little bit less predominant, but I, I want it to be totally a nice looking thing and I want the people at the post office to enjoy it. But when Ross handed me this, I said, you got a good stamp, you didn't cut it off and soak it. And he said, well, I didn't want to ruin the art. And, and I go around and I soak off those stamps because, well, my last name used to be Robertson and we, we're thrifty. So I'll put that away. And maybe I'm, I'm just going to take a little while to show you a few things that happened in this same way. I have to write, oh, Renata, I'm glad you're here, but I'm sorry you have to see this. This is a card to Alma Taylor. Uh, Alma is in the Bow Valley Calligraphy Guild. And I have to say thank you for a prize that I won last June at their closing party. And so I've used my quarter inch brush and I've actually used it on a blue envelope. And I wrote the word Alma in a, an almost uh, Neulandish like look. But you know, I was a little unhappy with myself. Look at this beautiful A. Look at this yucky A. Look at that. And Alma will know because she's a calligrapher. But people like Ross wouldn't know because he isn't a calligrapher. Uh, the other night when I was talking to people in Salem, I, I referred to the group of people who are not calligraphers as a great unwashed. But Alma is washed and she will know. Anyway, uh, Renata, don't tell her that, that um, her name was being taken <laughs> and used in a, in a workshop setting. Betty, so, and, yes? Betty I, have, I have to tell you that calligraphers see things in a different way when it's a gift than when <laughs> it's an exercise. So I don't think Alma would mind at all about that a I think she would enjoy what you've done and that's the main thing 
<laughs> well, thank you very much. And how lovely it is to hear your voice. I've, I've known you for a million years and just to have us together again is just wonderful. Well, I'll take Alma away here and, and I will send it to her because the work, these workshop demonstrations are over. And let me show you another one that I was, uh, I, I'm making cards for my friends in uh, Australia who are having birthdays. This is the one for Naomi. And I was ever so happy that Naomi had an O in the middle of her name. So I've done all of my little mosaics around her O. And she's a person who seems to choose to use pink. And I thought, well, can I do a whole bunch of variations of pink? And yes, I can. So that worked out well. I really didn't like her card though. This is a card that's going into that envelope. And I tried to use the mosaic effect on the candle and it was okay. And then I thought, oh, it needs a little bit more. And I started putting in these lines and I think, oh, you've ruined it, you've ruined it. Look at these things. I've got fix crossing fix. You don't have that in good calligraphy, but Naomi is a member of the Great Unwashed, and she will just be happy. So it's all right. You've got to know your audience. And here's another one. And I, I, am, uh, I am sad about this. Look at that. This is my other Australian friend. And I am choked. She has such a short name. And I thought, oh, I can do such a good job on this. And it's not good. I would like you to unmute yourself, someone, and tell me why it's not good. They're not going to tell me. <laughs> okay, well, I'll tell you. Anne looks skinny and puny. And I needed to make her name more like Alma. Because Alma is out there and bold. And Anne is puny and skinny, but Anne is a member of the Great Unwashed, so she might think that's all right. This is her card to go with it, and I always like to have the envelope and the card have kind of a togetherness, and, and I think you should too. So, yeah, it, it's nice to be able to air your dirty laundry to a group of people who might have some appreciation for the dirt. Now, to get to some of the things that were on the uh, exemplar sheet, I want us to have the image of a tree. The other day I thought, oh, and I said to Barb Qualley, Barb Qualley has been so good to me, I tell you, if you have a Barb Qualley in your life, you've got a lot of good stuff going on. Um, I used to have Duncan do all the things that I needed to have done, and now he can't do it. So I go to Barb's and I say, Barb, can you do this for me? And she lets me sit there. She lets me sit there with a pointer. And she lets me say, yes, I can move that a quarter of an inch for you. <laughs> and, and she does it. And she made these beautiful, beautiful exemplars for me. And I tell you, it was a joy to work with her because she is so smart and so able with the technology. And I, I, I said, and you have to put your name on there too. And she says, oh, I don't know. And I said, yes, you do. Because without you, I couldn't have done this. But anyway, I discussed it with her and I said, do you think I need to give them templates for trees and bells and stuff like that? And she said, no, I think they're old enough to do that. So I was happy about that. Anyway, I have made a template and you can see it's made out of an old box from Halloween treats. And if I were going to use this on an envelope, I would have that ready-made and able to be used. But for right now, for us to do this, I'm just going to do a tree. And you can certainly make a tree like this. It doesn't take any particular skill. Well, here, I'm assuming you have no skills, but I know you have a lot of skills. So there you go. All right. And now we're going to start. And it's, uh, we have to get started somewhere. And sometimes when we're working with calligraphy or with art, it's hard to face a blank sheet of paper. And now we're facing a blank tree. 
So putting a line in there somewhere, and I'm going to remember my brush has the beautiful capacity of being thick and thin. So I'm going to start with it being very thin and I'm going to bring a line in here. And it's gone from thick to thin. And I'm going to say, oh, maybe I'll just put a little ballet slipper in. And I'm very careful at the corner. And I might say, oh, that was a beautiful line. Maybe I will come down here and I'll flare my brush out down there just so that it goes along the line. And you'll notice, do you remember when we did brush at the beginning of the session, I wanted you to be able to fit it. Well, I'm asking you to fit it now. I'm gonna turn the page a little bit and I'm going to come around here and I'm going to start thicker and I'm going to come and I'm going to end a little thinner. And what I really want us to look for is the white line that's starting to emerge because the white line is what gives us an excitement. Let me come down here again and I'm going to turn the brush at the end so that I can go out along there. And I'm enjoying what I'm seeing. Uh, what can I do here? Yes. Are you still using the half inch brush or are you on the quarter? Uh, I am on my smaller uh, one that uh, Carolyn, uh, Caroline thinks she got at um, uh, iron oxide. And I think it's a little less than a quarter, but you could be using, I could be using my half. I'll, I'll switch to my half now. Thank you. Right in the middle of this thing and see how I can go. Okay. Oh, what a terrible color. Oh, and I didn't do a very good job here, but your friends who are getting this will never know. They'll just say, Oh, that's just lovely. Oh, and I'm, I'm enjoying the look of the two colors now. So maybe that was a nice thing to do. Thank you, Judy. And I'm gonna come down here and I have to come off and I have to be very gentle because I don't want my strokes to come on top of each other. I want to celebrate that line that I'm getting. How, I'm going, how am I going to deal with a space that's so small? I'm going to move in and I'm going to turn the brush a little bit and I'm going to hope against hope fervently that I can do it and I did. I have a few skills uh, and you might find that your skills need to be upped a little bit in order to be able to do this. Violet, you're probably saying no problem, no problem, because you do it all the time. Let me come over here. Maybe I can go up a bit and maybe I can come down here. Celebrate the beautiful white line that happens. Now, if you wanted to give yourself wonderful practice, for endless days, you would be able to use this if you decided that this year you want to have your Christmas cards uh, sent and you want to have them sent in envelopes that have been decorated like this. This is one that I did in order to sort of show you what I'm doing. I've left plenty of room to address a card here. I've used my template, which is this one that I cut out. And I've used it each time to make those trees. And you can see this one started out a, a little bit boxy. And yet there's quite an enjoyment seeing the boxiness there. This one started out with a couple of smooth lines and I had to work from there. This one seems to have a little bit of a flare going on. But I wanted you to see that so that you can say, you know, anything goes, it's all kind of beautiful. And then if you add the little bits of um, color 
a little bit of red. It seemed to be a nice way to do it. We've just had a tree service come to administer much cutting to five of the trees that we have on our property. And I tell you, when I received that bill from those people, and I haven't received it yet, I am going to make them a most beautiful envelope and it's going to be filled with trees like this. And I'm going to be sending a check in that envelope. You know, nowadays, when you can do your paying by um, e-transfer and that kind of thing, you don't have the joy of making envelopes quite as much as you used to. And for many people, it's a relief. But for me, I don't mind sending something to somebody. Uh, I, I will never forget the reaction I had when I sent a check to a company called The Weed Man, and they had uh, looked after our infestation of terrible bugs, and I covered the envelope with these terrible bugs looking just awful. And she phoned and she said, you have made my day. I loved this envelope. And you know, those people out there want to have something nice in their life too. So if you can send a check, it's kind of neat. So I'll, I'll leave you with that kind of idea. Lady, can I ask a question? Yes. It's Chris. I yes. was working just with my half inch um, flat brush on the mm -hmm. eye and the um, little squares. And I wound up with a whole bunch of white space in the middle. And it didn't look like you had any white space. Hmm. And it's not, um, it's, it's like rectangles. It's not, it's, it, I can't just put another little square in there. Uh, I Di Diana, is there any way that you can spotlight Chris? Yes. Yes. Where is Chris? I'm, I'm here. Um, I'm right beside you, Betty, on my screen. On. Uh, well, I would have to have her highlight your desk. Oh. Um, oh, okay. Here we go. Here we go. There, I found you. Okay. There. We got a side by side. Is that working? Oh, okay. Uh, that, uh, and, and what was your, you, you felt got, it was. I got a bunch of white space. I'm not seeing a lot of white space, oh. but I like the white space. If you didn't have the white space, it would be too, too full of color. You want to have those little bit of creases of white. Oh, cool. you do. I'm winning. Yeah. yeah, you're winning. Yes, you want them and you might want even more. Okay. Uh, okay, yes. Thank and, you. and you might want to get yourself a smaller brush because I yes. think you have uh, a little more excitement seeing it a little smaller. Yes, yes, I just used what I had. Thank you. Yes. Okay, and thank you, Diana. Oh, thank you for your tech, tech, techie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I want to go along now and maybe take a little look at the exemplar. You see how this one was very, very unintricate. It was just a bunch of lines. <laughs> On the gingerbread man up here, I've tried to make us feel that there's a little bit of roundness in his body. And sometimes you can do that. And it doesn't really even matter. But for some people like Caroline, she might say, oh, I know about a bird. Uh, I want to make it look a little bit more like a bird. And she might say, oh yes, on this one, you've actually done something that indicates that there might be the feeling of a wing going on. So you can certainly uh, use your artistic expertise to be able to do that. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about what I did on all of my Christmas cards last year. I decided that they were all going to have a, a similar thing. And I usually do that every year. I, I, want, I want to have something that's well, I send about a hundred or more. And so I want it to seem as if I've got something that I can do on each envelope. And last year they happened to be these long ones. And I would diligently do my uh, name. And then as soon as the name was done, I would take my brush and 
give myself a little line like that. And then I would be sure that I was always pulling the stroke to me. I'm going to connect and I'm going to push down and pull away. I'm going to connect and I'm going to pull away. Connect and pull away. And of course, I would be going much more quickly. But all of the envelopes that people got last year had this kind of foliage going on. And it didn't have to just be there. I might say, oh, you know, I think maybe I'm going to have another one here. And remember, you want to have it. it. You can do better if you're pulling away. I haven't filled up my brush again with paint. I'm just having a little echo of the color. I'm using the edge of the brush to get the thinness. And I'm using the thickness of the brush here. Uh, this, I think is the way it was going to be. I always try to arrange to have place for a stamp. And it usually, people like to have it in the upper right-hand corner, but there are some calligraphers out there who really disdain that. And as long as it has postage on it, they will put it forever. But sometimes it's lovely to have another thing coming in here. Now I haven't changed my watercolor at all and they're getting to be just whispers. Putting the envelope edge up there too is a good idea because then you say, okay, and that was going to have happened there. And it, it looks as if it was natural, but it's a lovely way to do practice on that stroke. Nothing, something, nothing. Oh, I don't have any. That was this one. And that is a stroke that is just so useful because that happened. <coughs> uh, Diana, I didn't do that one last night, uh, last week. And so that's one that I wanted to make sure that I got in. But what if you wanted to have just a plain old envelope and it was easy and you had to do no thinking at all? You would just say, Oh, where's the oh okay. so, so here's my envelope. I'm getting ready to do it, and I have no time. There it is. There's your Christmas tree. And you might say, Oh, maybe I've got time for another one. And so your brush was just held at uh, pretty much 90 degrees the whole way down. And then if you have your tiny little brush, you could put your little uh, decorations around and you might say, oh yeah, I'm, I'm gonna do that because I've got a bit of time. You can do this in front of TV. You can take a pile of envelopes, put them on your lap. And before you know it, you're, you can look up when they're kissing, but just look down, you can hear the dialogue and it's all right. Okay. <clears throat> All right. How is the time going? I'm thinking that we are getting to the time where I should try to do. Oh, no, let me go back. I want to go back to the that stroke that I told you about where you're starting at zero degrees, you're going immediately to a high angle and you're coming down to zero degrees. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Now I would clean out my brush because this is now going to become your Christmas candle. And so we're going to come down and there we are. And if you wanted to do um, a, a repeat of those, as I had shown you before, then you can put your Christmas candle in there and do something like that. And I believe those are both on your exemplar too. But let's go now, uh, and maybe I'll just discuss the Valentine. I thought since this might be a, a workshop that could go on to 
something else. If you were going to be doing Valentine's, it's really nice to try a mosaic one, like it is on your exemplar. And then you might do the same thing that you did for the tree, but start out with a heart shape and see where it takes you. So I think that people getting a Valentine from you that had a bunch of beautiful strokes and white spaces might be very, very nice. Uh, oh, and I have left something out. And then to have a Valentine that stays white and just has the surroundings is another pleasant way of going around. What if you had a friend who had an O in the middle of their name? And, and uh, this is my granddaughter and <laughs> her name is Hope. And I've got this on the exemplar, but here is another place. I've got a wee bit of an O in there. You can hardly see it. But if I take my brush and I just want to do some practicing, I can come out. And sometimes it's a good thing to start. If you can give yourself four places, you'll notice that I'm turning that brush a lot. And now I can start filling in. I can start filling in. I might have to juice up a little bit more. And we don't mind that because if we have some darknesses and some lightnesses, it's okay. And notice that I'm not worried about the letters there. Now, here's another way that you can practice a bit in your getting white spaces. So I'm going to say, okay, very little. Now a little more pressure. And I'm keeping that white space. I want to keep it. Keep that white space. Oh, I almost missed it. <clears throat> I'm just going to get something to show you, but I know you have things to do. Well, I guess I'm not. No, the best laid plans of mice and men gang after Glay, and I can't find it. But it was a book that I did. And I have all sorts of things like this going on where I've tried to just fill in the space. Oh, Violet, I need to be nice and organized like you. And I guess I'm just not. But anyway, if you filled up the whole envelope for Granddaughter Hope like this and even went right to the edge of it, you would have a rather exciting thing for a simple O in her name. So please remember that that can be done. And if you've already got, if you start doing some of your calligraphy so that it doesn't matter if you go over your strokes, if H and P and E had been done in ink, I would have been in deep doo-doo. But if they're done in my ballpoint pen, I can easily go over them and keep going over them and they will still stay there. And notice what's happening in the middle. You've almost got a lovely white star shape. So you, you have possibilities. And so we've got the envelope that we made with that very same stroke. And we've got the ability to do Hope's name and it's the very same stroke. So now we want to go and try to do a poinsettia. Uh, the reason why I'm doing a poinsettia is actually because the people in Salem, Oregon said, and do you think there might be a poinsettia? And I'm thinking, oh, they're kind of hard. And Violet, I took the workshop using the wedged brush to make the poinsettia. And I have to say that I... I, I didn't do badly, but I didn't do as well as I would have liked. 
And the reason for me was that I'm so used to my half inch brush that it just seemed to be easier for me. But I am impressed with what you've come up with, with, with your wedge brush, because I think that's one that is hard to control. Anyway, here is what the poinsettia is going to look like for us today. And I'm filling it up. I'm being a little wetter than I would normally be. I'm going into a couple of my reds. Oh, and Caroline, you're going to say, oh, look at her palette, it's so terrible. But you know, I've been going around with these for about 40 years and you can see that the edge is coming off and it's, well, you know, here a piece just came off. And, and I could afford to get another palette, but I'm just not going to. This just goes with me forever. So if we're looking at a poinsettia, we're not sometimes looking at it right from the top. If we were, then it would have to show almost a circle. And I'll, I'll talk about that. But for right now, I think, uh, and we're, most of us are right-handed. So I am going to work like a right-hander, but Joyce, you might be working as a left-hander. And so I'm pulling my strokes to the left. You may be pulling them to the right. I'm turning my page a little bit and I'm going to pull and then go down on my brush quite hard and then come off lightly. And I think with that stroke, I have a very poinsettia-y uh, kind of stroke. Now I'm going to do that again. I load it up with a little water and I'm going back into my terrible palette. And again, I'm going to come in and I'm going to slide in and now I'm going to come close to that first stroke and I'm coming down. And I think that I have another fairly nice petal. I'm going to load up again. And usually I'm not loading up all the time, but I'm finding that I have to have a wetter brush in order for it to spread and be wide. This one is going to be a little bit shorter than these two. Uh, for any of us who have been trained in art, uh, foreshortening is happening. The thing that is closest to us seems to get a little bit bunched up. And so it's going to be a little bit shorter. So I'm going to be slightly shorter and I'm going to really press on my brush immediately. And I'm going to come off. And Diana's going to say, I know where you did it. And she'd say, it's right there. Because that's where I had to say, I'm going to come off the brush and go into my lighter stroke at the end. And she's absolutely right. She knows where I did it. And actually, I can see that happening on, on some of those petals. But for the poinsettia, I don't think it matters. I'm going to turn my page now because it's going to be easier for me to put the pressure on the brush. And I'm going to come away and go down immediately. And here, I'm going to just indicate a little bit because as I'm looking at the poinsettia, I'm seeing it kind of across the top. And that is what I'm going to see if I'm looking at it from the side. What would happen though, if we were going to be doing a poinsettia and we were looking at it right down at the top, we're at Superstore and we're deciding which one to buy. And so we're looking right down at the top. So we have to think, now there's going to be, and I'm going to put, the poinsettias have, little balls in the middle and they're yellow. And it's going to be hard for me to think of those, but I have to know that they're there. And I have to try to get about six petals in the area of what would be the, the circumference of a circle. So I am going to be down on them. I'm so hard on it. I'm turning my page down. I'm going to have to load up because I need a bit more water. It's hard to make that brush go unless it's wet. I'm going to come there and down on it. I'm a little unhappy. I've got a little too much white there. Uh, 
they do have to overlap each other a little bit. And if I were a real artist doing it with a real paintbrush, I could certainly arrange to do that. But I'm trying to do it with my, my one paintbrush. Have I done 180 degrees of petals? Nearly, but not quite. So I've got to try to do it down on it. One, two, three, four. I've only got two more petals and I've got a whole lot of poinsettia. Ooh. You know, when you're demonstrating, you really want to have things go well. And I don't know, this is, it's, this is a bit of trouble. And in here, oh, can I do it? Well, sort of. So I managed to get six petals in there, but I was down on top of that so hard. Now, if you look at a poinsettia, you will find that it seems to be coming along. There seems to be more petals coming in here. So when that first one is dry, there's no reason why another little one can't maybe come on top. But it, this would have to be quite a bit darker in order for it to show. And I don't think I'm quite dark enough. But that's really what's happening on top of the poinsettia. And you'll notice in the exemplar, I have tried to show you from the top and I've tried to show it to you from the side and I've tried to indicate that those little petals are there and they're a little bit darker. Here's one where I decided I'm not gonna do a darn thing. And if you wanted to, do something that was a little more simple and not even think about the other petals that might be coming along there, then this could happen. And a person at Christmas getting your letter might say, oh, I know that that's a poinsettia because it sort of says I'm a poinsettia. All right. And how do we make the leaves? Well, we're going to clean our brush off a little bit. I've got red in it and I don't mind if the brush isn't quite clean because uh, sometimes artists want to have a little bit of the residual paint in there and it just seems to be a little more cohesive with the design. So I'm pulling uh, a leaf out and because I'm using my brush I can sometimes do a little bit of this, and if I'm wet enough, and if I'm on a good enough paper, right now I'm just on a bond paper, but if I were on uh, watercolor paper, uh, the paint might run into those little lines that I just put there. And here, I'll come in here and fill in, and again, if I'm quick enough, and if I was wet enough, I might get them to fill in a bit there. I'm going to turn the paper, and I may have to load up again. And here we are. And you know, I don't want you to keep going, but if you had a real poinsettia in your house, you would find that it has a lot of leaves that keep coming down. But eventually we have to think about a stem and I'm going to say, oh, I think my stem's coming out about there. And I start there because in my mind, I want it to look as if it might have happened. And there I'm going to put it. And I don't really want you to put any leaves there. I just, if, even if they, if you went down to almost nothing in your brush and just had a little bit of that happening, that gives you the idea of the poinsettia. If this were totally dry, I would be going in with an absolutely clean brush and I would be putting just a swipe of yellow up there. And I don't know whether it's totally dry. And then when that gets to be totally dry, I would go in with my ballpoint pen or with my Pigma pen or with even a pencil. And I would be doing a little bit of this kind of thing just to indicate that I know that there are a bunch of little yellow balls in the middle. But I don't want you to do this. No painstaking yellow balls. 
because then it won't look artistic. It will look a little more artistic if you use a bit of pressure and no pressure and make it look a little more messy. Then it seems to have a little more of how I want it to look. <sighs> and I think that um, maybe we're there. Would you like to have any questions answered now? You to make sure you know where you're going. So if you put a little dot there, uh, you can either put the dot there physically or in your mind. I want you to come toward the dot and now I want your pressure to be on the side of the brush that's away from the dot. Did you try that? Trisha? Yes, thank you. Okay. Come to the dot. And as soon as you get there, now the other side of the brush is important. You're putting a tiny bit of pressure on the other side and pulling away. Does that help? I'm glad, thank you. I think this is, um, I'll watch the recording again. <laughs> Okay, I know it's a hard one because sometimes people think, oh, I got to do this, I got to do that. And, and then they get this kind of ugly thing in there. What you want is a flatness. Uh, so there's really, you have to rest on the other side of the brush in order to get that roundness. Betty, it's yes. seven here. I can, I can hear you still from the class that I took with you in person and I have my my brush in my hand and I remember you saying the brush has to be really quite vertical for the first one and yes. then you have to roll your fingers and for yes. me it's taken two years to figure out how to roll my fingers but they are getting better but honestly okay. that was the trick you taught me yes what I'm yeah. doing is actually turning my fingers like that my 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 this finger is turning the brush around okay this finger is turning the brush around so when i come here that finger turns the brush around i come here and that finger turns the brush around it's just it pulls it down pulls the side down so in that vein, could you do the candle stroke a few yes. times, please? Huh? Okay, I'm at zero degrees, and now my thumb is pulling the brush down. And my thumb is putting the brush back. Here, I have no pressure, and now my thumb is pulling the brush down. And now my thumb is pushing the brush back to zero. So my finger and my thumb are really important. I, I once had someone in the class who wanted to hold it with the, the middle finger and that did not work out well. Uh, I, I feel that you have so much power between the thumb and the, uh, darn, my phone is ringing. Uh, is there any other question that I, is, is that coming any better, Judy? Oh, yes. I, I'm just doing the, the um, Romans thing with, with what's his name? With and, John Stevens, yes. And yeah, he was, this is such an important stroke for Romans as well. Exactly. So. so if you're doing it with John Stevens, you are probably wanting to be at zero. You're at a very high angle, and then you're back at zero. And then you're coming around here, and he is asking you to go off this way yeah it's just that spinal stroke it's so hard to master it, it, it is and and I don't know whether anybody ever feels that they've totally mastered Romans <laughs> uh, but but John Stevens is a wonderful person to have taken from I yeah. think Renata will remember and I remember watching him once just doing a huge piece of paper with Romans 
I remember Renati, you asked him a question about, I can't even remember what it was, but just to see him there operating was wonderful. Oh, it's phenomenal, yeah. Thank you. You're most welcome. And thank you for taking from him. He's, he's just a real pistol as far as the uh, telegraphic world is concerned. 